Now, uh, we'll just step back uh, one step backward to find out first what is nesting. So many of you uh, may have not used some of our nesting features uh, that are offered in our uh, standalone Visual CAD CAM and Rhino CAM products. So we'll talk about what's parts nesting and then we'll uh, see how that's different from profile nesting, which we have just released in version in our latest version of our CAM products. So parts nesting is basically uh, nesting of parts into a sheet. So you're basically uh, taking either you know, flat panel parts, which could be a solid surface or a mesh geometry, or it could be just uh, two-dimensional curves that you may have imported or drawn in your CAD system. And you wanna basically take these parts and then fill them into a sheet. So you want to pack them into a sheet to get the best maximum uh, utilization or optimization of the sheets. So in the nesting process, <clears throat> which is currently available in our standalone Visual CAD CAM and also in Rhino CAM, you'd go up to the uh, menu, CAM menu, and then select Nest. And this has been available for the past several releases. Uh, we'll talk about the... Uh, with a quick note, uh, for all the Rhino Cam and Visual Cam, CAD Cam users, the nesting module is actually available in all of the modules. So you, if you have a, a 2020 version uh, or even a 2019 version, you have the nesting module, this nesting module that Wudeh is showing available for use. Just wanted to make sure everybody understands that. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. So. There's two types of nesting you could perform, a true shape nesting and a rectangular nesting. A true shape nesting basically uh, will use the true shape of the geometry to nest them into a sheet, uh, whereas a rectangular nesting would consider a bounding rectangle around each of the part for nesting it. So it's also known as in some systems could call it box nesting. So true shape will give you a much better fit because it takes the true shape of the geometry into account and you'll be able to get a much better utilization of your sheet. So there's two types of nesting that are available. So as you can see, the uh, wizard here is a, you know, like a browser driven interface. You just click through a wizard. The next step is to define your sheet. Uh, many of you may be familiar with our nesting module that's offered currently. So I'm just gonna quickly go through. The sheets either can be defined by entering in the length and the height of a sheet and the thickness, or you can even uh, pick a geometry uh, that you may have drawn in your CAD system, which could be here Rhino or it could be uh, Visual CAD CAM. So I could either define my sheet by creating a rectangle <clears throat> and I can select curves and then pick this as my sheet, or I could enter in the length and the height without having to create a geometry for it. So once you define your sheet, you can specify the thickness, uh, starting direction and any grain direction for the sheet can be set right here and then you'd go into the uh, select parts to be nested. So in this step, you'd wanna pick all the parts that you'd like to nest. I could use select parts, uh, window select all of these parts in here. And then you will see that each of these parts are listed and it also automatically uh, identifies the holes in each part. So that are based on the geometries that you select the topology, it automatically identifies the parts and the holes automatically in here. So we have a total of seven parts and you can see there's a total of seven parts and each part has a set of holes in here. You can specify a quantity. So I'm gonna put in the count as 10 and I'll set the count to be equal to all the, you know, 10 of each parts. So they're automatically updated to 10. We could specify the orientation step angle. Uh, we'll get into the details later as we cover profile nesting. And then I'm gonna specify the distance between part to part, distance from part to sheet. Uh, we'll estimate the number of sheets. So we need a total of two sheets. We'll update the sheet count and then execute the nest. So what you're noticing here is each of these parts are being nested into the sheet. So this is also known as parts nesting or we call it our, in our nesting module. So you can see we have two sheets and then once you go down to commit nest and hit commit, each of these sheets will be exported into separate layers. Now you do also have an option to export them into a separate 3DM file or a VCP file if you're running Visual CAD CAM. So we now have two sheets in here and they're basically exported into separate layers. So in this process, you nested the parts into a sheet 
And once you've done that, you'd have to switch to your mill module and then select each of these parts and program your tool paths. So that's been the typical workflow once you nest your parts to a sheet. Now, what we are going to be today uh, demonstrating is our profile nesting module, where instead of nesting the parts into a sheet, we will be generating a profile toolpath and nest those toolpaths into the sheet. So that'll eliminate the need for having you to go and pick each and every part to nest them. And also it accounts for your tool diameter, your entry and exit, all of those will be accounted for in profile nesting. So just to summarize, what I demoed here is parts nesting. We will now take a look at profile nesting. So I'm gonna go back and just hide these two layers in here that were done using parts nesting. And to switch from the nesting module to the profile nesting, you can select the, the CAM menu in version 2020 and select profile nesting. The profile nesting module comes included with standard and higher configurations with maintenance. So customers who are on maintenance and have standard and higher configurations will get the profile nesting module automatically starting with version 2020. So if you're not on uh, a standard configuration, if you're running Express, then you can upgrade to standard to avail these features. Uh, this module can also be licensed separately. So if you're not interested, if you're only interested in this module, uh, you know, you could be an OEM or you want to bundle this with one of your uh, plasma cutters or anything like that, uh, we could uh, just license just this module and not the mill module or the other, other modules. Thank you. Thank you. So the profile nesting module interface looks very similar to our mill module interface. You have the machining browser, also known as our machining operations or MOPS browser window, and the machining objects browser, and the workflow, the ribbon interface looks very similar. We have a few more controls in here, which we'll talk about. You can load your two libraries that you created in the mill module. You can use the same tools in the profile nesting module as well, or you can create tools as you uh, start programming it in the profile nesting module. So a typical workflow here is to define a machining process. So it's set to two and three axis operations can be programmed as it is the main number of axes is set to three because you'll be doing a profiling operation, could be stepping out in multiple Z levels, so it's just like a two and a half axis operation. The next step is to make a selection for your post processor. The same post that you use in your mill module are accessible from the profile nesting module. So it points to the same directory where your post for the mill modules are located. The next step here is to specify or define the sheet where you'd like to nest the tool paths, the profile tool paths into a sheet. You could either use select curves and you can select one or more curves to define your sheet, or you can specify the length and the width. So in this particular case, I'm gonna define the length and the height as 48 by 48 inches. I can give it a thickness for my sheet and select add sheet. So we have a sheet defined, and the count is the quantity of the sheet. Uh, by default, it's set to one. You have your sheet thickness, and then you can set the nesting direction and the grain direction. We'll go back and revisit some of these uh, parameters. So once you've defined your sheet, the sheet is created and displayed in your uh, graphics area. In the next step, we want to define our stock. So I'm going to go into stock and select box stock, or I can define it as a part box stock. So selecting box stock, will automatically create the stock to the extent of the sheet. So you can see it's set to 48 by 48, and since we may put in the sheet thickness as a quarter of an inch, the stock thickness is automatically set right in here. The stock is defined, and the information is updated under the machining job. In the next step, we could set a work zero to establish where you want to put the zero, 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 or currently it is set to your top of the stock, and uh, the southwest corner. If you need to pick a different location for the zero for your sheet, you can introduce or insert a work zero. If you like where the origin is, you can skip the step of creating or inserting a work zero. In the next step, we will go ahead and create 
profiling operations. Now this profiling operation is exactly the same as what you've seen in the mill module. The user interface looks exactly the same, except there's an additional tab called nesting parameters, which we'll be covering as we uh, define the parameters for profiling. So here we have several different parts that needs to be profiled. So rather than picking all of the parts into one profiling operation, we're gonna select each part and program them in separate profiling operations. So this will allow you to generate the profiling operation and then nest the profile toolpaths efficiently into your sheet. So we've selected the curves. We could either use curve edge regions if you're working with 2D geometries or you can select surface edges from solid surface models. You can use surface boundaries or even flat areas uh, if you're working with uh, you know, mesh geometries or even from solid surface geometries. So in this example, I will be selecting curve edge regions. In the next step, I'm gonna define a tool. I will be creating a half an inch uh, diameter tool, set the parameters, the feeds and speeds. You can see the interface is very similar to what you've seen in your mill module, exactly the same, there's no difference. And then you'll specify your feeds and speeds to be loaded from the tool. Establish your clearance plane, it's set to automatic. Set your cutting parameters where you can specify your cut direction, cut start side, we'll pick outside. We'll come back and revisit this topic about alternate using nesting. We'll specify the total cut depth. We would like to cut a quarter of an inch. If you'd like to break it up into multiple steps, you can do multiple depths per cut. Set your entry and exit parameters. And then finally, we would go into the nesting parameters tab and specify the quantity, or the, you know, how many of these profiles that you'd like to nest. So I'm gonna put in 10, so I would like to have 10 of these nested into the sheet. So I'm gonna set the count as 10 and click generate. So we now have generated one operation, two and a half axis profiling for the first part. I'm gonna repeat this for a few additional parts. So the easiest way is to copy and paste. I can either do right click copy and paste, or I can use Control C, Control V using the keyboard shortcuts to copy paste it. So we'll add a few more parts in here. Right click, generate, repeat the same. Select the parts, generate. So once I have a program three of these parts in here, we'll go back and add the rest in a moment. The next step is once you have generated the profiling toolpaths for each of these parts, you'd wanna go ahead and define your parameters for nesting. So you'd go into nesting parameters and you'll find this under the operations to nest group on the machining browser. And in this particular uh, dialog, you can specify the orientation step angle. Uh, we'll come back and discuss uh, what each of these parameters mean and what they represent. Specify your distance between part to part distance part to sheet, and we can now select estimate number of sheets to estimate how many sheets are required to nest 10 quantities of each of these profile operations into the sheet. And selecting execute nest now creates a, a setup folder called nested sheets, and a sheet is defined or created. So when you click on sheet one, what you're noticing here is the toolpaths are nested into the sheet. So we have 10 profiles for each of these three parts we just programmed. It also accounts for your the uh, entry and exit, your toolpath, what you program, the cutter offset, all of it is automatically accounted for in the profile nesting. Now, I can go back and add a few additional operations. Now, before I do that, I want to talk about a few additional options in here. So when you expand the sheet, you will notice that it lists each and every operation in here. And as you select the operation, it highlights the corresponding uh, profile operations that are nested into your sheet. You can edit each and every individual operation, make changes to it, and then generate those operations. So for example, if you need to move your entry and exit, or you wanna add some bridges and tabs, you can edit each operations individually. So this gives you the control to make those edits for each individual operation. 
and you can go back and simulate these operations. Right click, simulate, we'll simulate it. Or you can switch to your simulate tab and then select play to run a simulation. And you can always go to preferences and change the simulation speed in here to have it run faster. So now that we have profiled three parts, I would like to go back and add the rest of the parts into the operation. So I will make copies of these operation in here. So when I made a copy of this, I just did a copy paste, you'll notice that the nesting sheets, nested sheets setup is automatically flagged as dirty, indicating that you made some changes. So the sheets needs to be updated. So which means we need to either estimate the number of sheets again and execute the nest. So let's go back and add the remaining parts to it. We'll generate toolpaths for each of these. There's two more operations. So I'm just window selecting these curves. And now we're down to the final one here. I'm gonna select this operation, generate. You can also reorder these operations any way you like it, drag and drop. You can rename these operations in here, call it part one, Part two, I'm just gonna rename a few of these here. So name them as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can identify each of these. Okay, so now that we have made these changes in here, I'm gonna go back into nesting parameters and select estimate number of sheets. So it's now determined that there's two sheets required to fill all of these profile toolpaths, 10 quantities of each into the sheet. So I'm gonna select update sheet count. The sheets are now updated. And since we've chosen the nested sheet layout to be stacked, I'm gonna choose execute nest. So the Two sheets are stacked on top of one another. So you have the sheet one and sheet two. Now we can simulate each of these sheets. You can just highlight nested sheets, right click, and then selecting simulate. We'll simulate the sheet one and then simulate sheet two. So we are simulating sheet one here. and the stock automatically gets reset before the simulation for sheet two begins. And as you can see now, the sheet two is now being simulated. Now the exact same workflow also works in our standalone product, Visual CAD CAM, also in our latest Visual CAM for SolidWorks product as well. So we now simulated the two sheets. We can go ahead and post process these out to the machine. So you can post process each sheet out separately. So right click and post. There's the posted output for your sheet number one and you can post the sheet number two as well. It's a posted output for sheet two. Let's look at the report in here. So when you go to nesting report, it gives you information about how many profiles are nested in each sheet. So the operation 10 of operation three was nested in sheet one. You can see seven of operation seven was sheet one and three in sheet two. So it basically gives you a report, a summary of the parts that were nested into each sheet. So that gives you information which you can also print it out. Now let's go back and make a few uh, edits in here. 
So if I go back and edit the operation, double click on one of these operations in here and change any of the parameters. So for example, I would like to change my cut direction from climb to conventional and generating the toolpath automatically flags your nested sheet dirty. So you just have to go back, right click and execute the nest. So any change that you make to the parent level in the tree will automatically trigger the operations uh, nested sheet to be flagged dirty so you can go back and update it. Even when you make a change to your sheet, for example, your nesting direction, you can change it from along X to along Y. And then when you update this, it automatically flags your nested sheet to be dirty. So in this case, it's gonna nest the parts uh, along the Y direction first instead of along X, which was the default option. So you can make the change. All you have to do is execute the nest and update it. You can also specify a grain direction for the sheet and the parts will be automatically oriented based on the grain direction. So if you specify a grain direction for a sheet and you wanna override it in the part, you can go ahead and specify a grain direction in the part right here. You can choose the grain direction for each of the parts you're nesting. You also have the ability to lock the orientation. Orientation allows you to uh, set uh, how would you like the parts to be placed within the sheet. So if you look under nesting parameters, the orientation step angle is set to 90 degrees, which means any possible orientation of 90 degrees, the parts can be rotated and nested. So if you lock the orientation, it'll always remain at the orientation the way the parts you have it staged in here or drawn in here, the toolpath, so it would never change the orientation. So you can lock the orientation for certain parts if needed by going into the nesting parameters tab and where you can specify the uh, orientation. Now, let's go back and uh, take a look at a few other settings in here. Now on this particular operation, uh, we programmed the profiling, we selected all of these curves and we chose in the cut parameters tab, we chose alternate using nesting and we selected use outside or inside for closed curves and we chose outside. So this means that the outermost curve will be profiled to the outside and the inner curves will alternate, which means if this is profiled on the outside, these curves would be profiled on the inside. So selecting alternate using nesting will automatically alternate between outside and inside. So this is an option that's been introduced in our latest version. It's also available in the milling module in two axis profiling, as well as in profile nesting in, uh, in profile nesting module as well. So now that we have specified alternate using nesting, so I'm gonna run a simulation in here, just a animation. And you will notice that it profiles the inside of these shapes. And then it does the outside. Now you also have the option to sort these. So as you go into the sorting tab, you have the option to perform clustering and you can choose the cut order. So in this particular example, I'm gonna go back and pick these in a specific order and I'll generate the toolpath. And now when I run a simulation, you'll notice that it shows the outside profile being cut before the inside ones are profiled. So ideally, it's desirable that you wanna do the insides first before you cut the outside. So in such cases, you can go under the sorting tab and use perform clustering and you can set the cut order to do the insides first before you do the outside. So you have the option to toggle between inside out or outside in under sorting. And this option is also available in the mill module under two axis profiling. So now you'll notice that it profiles the inside before it cuts the outside. And on top of this, you can still apply the sorting using minimum distance or directional sort as well under the sorting tab. And once you make these changes, 
you'll notice that the nested sheets is flagged dirty. So when you execute the nest, it will automatically update that for the 10 profiles that are being nested into the sheet. So you don't have to go and individually update each of them. So the next thing we would want to take a look at here is how about we use multiple different tools? We might be uh, looking at using different tools because as some of these profiles in here, you will notice that the cutter is too large to be able to profile some of these holes in here. So the profiling operation was not able to uh, profile these holes. So I'm going to create a new tool in here. We'll add a second tool. We'll create a quarter inch tool diameter. We'll save this out as a new tool. And I'm going to drag and drop the tool on top of the operation. We'll update the tool path. And I'll do the same for the operation number seven as well here, since it's unable to profile some of these holes. Right click, regenerate. So now that we have updated the tool paths in the parent level, I'm going to right click and execute the nest for the changes to be applied. So in this process, it will update the nesting operations. Now as it's updating the nesting operations, I will switch to our uh, visual CAD CAM product to kind of you know, give you an overview of the same, how it works in our standalone product as well. So the same interface, you can switch from the menu, you can go from the mill module to the profile nesting module, and you have a similar workflow as you can work through it. And we also have the same interface and workflow in our visual cam for SOLIDWORKS product as well. So you'll notice that there's now the profile nesting in Visual Cam 2020 for SOLIDWORKS. You can go into the uh, Profile Nesting browser by selecting Profile Nest. And we can now define our sheets. So we're defining the sheets in Visual Cam for SOLIDWORKS, Visual Cam 2020 for SOLIDWORKS. Uh, define the post processor. Specify the stock. And then we can start programming our machining operations in here. So go to profiling. I could use select curve edge regions. In this particular example, I'm going to use select flat areas. We'll pick a face. Define our tools, and I can use the same tool libraries that you're using in your mill module in profile nesting as well. So this is a brand new module that's available in version 2020, and profile nesting is available inside of uh, in our SolidWorks plugin as well. Establish the cutting parameters, cut levels. I can even pick the depth from the part. specify entry and exit, and then in the nesting parameters tab, you can set the count and generate it. So we'll repeat the same operation for a few other parts as the workflow is very similar. So I'm just doing a copy paste selecting the flat areas, generating the toolpath. So as you can see, it's very intuitive and easy to select features for programming the profile toolpaths. So we'll add a few other parts to the profile operation. And then we have one last part in here. I'm going to make a copy paste. Select the flat areas. 
pick the face, generate it. So once you have these operations created, you'd go into nesting parameters, specify your nesting options, distance part to part, part to sheet. Uh, you can set the nested sheet layouts in here. So along X will basically, if you have multiple sheets, it'll nest them along the X axis where you can specify a spacing between each sheet. Along Y would be along the Y axis. Stack would basically stack them right on top of one another. Estimate number of sheets, update the sheet count, and execute nests. So you're now seeing the profiles nested into the sheet. There's a total of two sheets, and this is in Visual Cam for SolidWorks with our latest release. We can run a report to take a look at the nesting report and post process these sheets individually to the machine or you can post process multiple sheets to the machine as well. Now we also have a few other options I would like to talk about in here is uh, in the nesting parameters, we have the sort by operations. There's choices of default or using tool size ascending and descending. So when you have operations that are programmed with different tools, so for example here, if I had an operation that was programmed with a, a second tool, I'm going to make a change to one of these operations. So I'll pick this part and then change the operation to use a smaller tool. And then we'll go back and execute the nest. So when you have different tools, and in the nesting parameters, if you set sort mops by default, it'll basically have the profiles nested based on the operation uh, sequence that you have defined in here. So when you run your simulation, you will notice that there's going to be multiple tool changes possibly occurring as you go from uh, you know, one operation to the other. In this particular case, you can see that it switches from the smaller diameter cutter to a larger diameter cutter, and then it may switch again to the smaller diameter cutter. So if you wanted to uh, prioritize, and if you wanted to basically uh, have it based on the tool, so you want to, you know, have it profile all the operations uh, based on the tool, the smaller tool first, and then the larger tool, or the other way around, you can go back into nesting parameters and you can say sort the operations by tool size. I could say descending. So the largest tool would first be uh, profile nested. It'll basically, in the output, it'll basically output the uh, tool paths for the uh, largest diameter cutter. In this case, happens to be the half an inch cutter. And then it would be the quarter inch tool. So now when I go back and run the simulation here, you will notice that it's basically going to do it based on the tool uh, you know, that we set. Uh, it'll basically output it. So that way it'll minimize the number of times you got to go through tool changes. So this is an option that is available to you under nesting parameters. Now there's one other thing I would like to cover here is uh, the priority for nesting uh, that is available in the nesting uh, parameters in the profiling operation. So well, they can you also show posting as well? So there are some questions on posting. So. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, would you like me to show the posting before I go into the priority? Uh, go ahead and finish up the priority and then okay. show the post. Thank you. So we have seven different parts in here and you may want to nest certain parts into the sheet prior to the other parts getting nested. So you can specify a priority in here. So for example, if I would like to nest uh, these parts before the other parts are being nested, I can set a priority of one. So one would be the highest priority and anything that's greater than one will basically the priority decreases prior level. So I can set this to one 
And then for the other parts, I can change the priority to two. So I'm going to set this to two, generate it. We'll repeat the same for a few other parts. We'll set the priority here. I'm going to change the priority for this part to be three. So which means that the higher the number, the lower the priority. So we can set priority for each part that needs to be nested. I'm going to put this as um, three, and I'll set this to five. Generate. So now I'll go back and execute the nest again. So now you'll notice that the parts with priority one gets nest profile nested first before parts with priority set to two, three, and four, as you can see in the sheets. So let's go ahead and post process these now. Right click and post. And I can select the post processor in here. I'll just pick um, mark as the current post processor. And there's your posted output file. and list the operation names and the profile for each operation. Likewise, I can post process the sheet number two. And saving the part in SolidWorks will automatically save all of the profile nesting we call the CAM data with the SOLIDWORKS part. So you can, or anytime you can go back and make changes, edit, all you have to do is generate, execute the nest, post-process it out. So all of the information that you program in the machining job will be saved with it. Uh, Joe, with this, I would like to um, conclude my part of the demonstration and um, hand it back to you. Uh, thank you, Uday. Uh So that uh, actually concludes. Uh, we we had a few questions. Um, it looks like uh, pretty much it's a it's a it's an easy little product that you can get your hands around pretty quickly. Uh, and uh, we are we are actually you know uh, will be enhancing this product as we move forward. This is our first release, and we've already had a lot of enhancement requests for this. So this is a great opportunity for you guys. Uh, if you're if you're thinking about using it, please go ahead and drop us uh, an email to support at Megsoft with with all the enhancements that you would like to see, and we would like to get them out as soon as possible and make this as productive a product as possible for you guys. So please do that. Uh, the part grain direction. There was a question about part grain direction. Uh, do you want to talk about that today, quickly? Uh, sheet and part dire grain direction? Sure, I can certainly do that. Okay. So in um, profile nesting, when we define sheets, we could def specify a grain direction for the sheet. So if you set the grain direction to be along X for the sheet. So when we execute the nest, So this would use along X to maintain the grain direction of the sheet. So the parts gets oriented automatically based on the grain direction. However, you can override the grain direction for a part by going into nesting parameters. And you can set the grain direction of the part to be along Y. So when I do a generating here and then go back and execute the nest, so now the, the grain direction that you set on the part takes precedence over the grain direction that you set on the sheet. So that changes the grain direction based on what you specified. So in this case, for this particular part, we set the grain direction to be along the Y, and you'll notice that the grain direction is being now honored. So it overrides what was set on the, set on the sheet uh, for what you specify on the part. So you, if you specify a grain direction for the sheet, 
and if you want all the parts to use the same grain direction, so you don't have to go and specify a grain direction for each and every part. But if you want to control the grain direction for an individual part, you can override it by going into the nesting parameters tab in the profiling operation for that specific part and set the grain direction for it. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Jose. Uh, anything else uh, we would like you want to cover? This is a great opportunity for you guys to drop us a question at the questions uh, box. Uh, we'll wait for a few more minutes. And uh, if not, uh, we would conclude this and get the video of the recording uh, sent out to all of you. Um, oh, one other quick thing that I would like to mention, these, this product along with the G-Code Editor product that we demonstrated uh, last month in our previous AMS webinar are what we call AMS or Annual Maintenance Subscription Products. So you will have to, you don't have to pay anything extra, but if you are active on a maintenance and all of you are because you're attending uh, these, um, uh, these webinar, which means you are an active member, uh, then you will have access to these products. As long as you keep your maintenance active, you will have access to these products. But once the maintenance subscription, if you let it expire, uh, these products will no longer work. So uh, I hope you can uh, you understand uh, understand that. So. Uh, 